And so the Bible from 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14, it says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Right? That's what the Bible says. So, um, do we do things in order and orderly and in an orderly way? Yes. Yes? Are you sure? Yes. What do you do in order and in an orderly way? Uh -huh. And then with the older one, Aziza, what do you do in an orderly way? I turn out my bed. You what? On my, on my schedule. You plan out your day, Rohan? That's alright, that's okay. So God wants us to do things in an orderly way. So the lesson reads, have you ever grown sunflowers in your garden? They are lots of fun to grow because they get so tall and have such big yellow flowers. The plants can be 10 feet high and the plants can be one foot across. How big are they? How is 10 feet high? That, that is wide, yes, that's how wide they can be. But 10 feet high, can you imagine that, anything that's 10 feet high? Like the tallest man? 10 oh. feet? That's way beyond the tallest man. Not a giant. Not a giant. Perhaps not a giant, that's true. <coughs> that is true. And it says, I wish I had a picture of a sunflower. Do you have any picture? Sunflowers? I can share what I've got on my phone. So that's a picture of sunflowers. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> right. Lovely. Pardon? So it usually it shows us what's there around the around the outside of the flower. There's usually the bright yellow petals, and all of those bumps in the center, in the middle, are the sunflower seeds. The sunflower. Uh, it's not a very big one, but it has only a few hundred seeds in it. So the, if we had the picture, uh, again, I'll share my picture. So that's not a very big sunflower, but it's still got a lot of seeds in it, right? And then... You mean like the biggest sunflower in the world, the biggest one? Not the biggest one. We're talking about this small one. That's so tiny. Yeah, the small one still has a lot of seeds, though, even though it's so tiny. So it says... Uh, the sunflower in the picture is not very big. It has only a few hundred seeds in it. Some of the bigger sunflowers can have thousands of seeds. Uh, now, suppose that you needed to figure out how to put hundreds of thousands of sunflower seeds in the middle of a flower. How would you do it? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know, right? No. How would you put them in such an orderly way? Would you do it in an orderly way? What? Hundreds of seeds into a small sunflower. That would take all day. It would take all day and all the while, right? So it says that would seem like the easiest thing to do, but that's not what God did when He made the sunflowers, right? It says the seeds are arranged in a special way. If you were to look carefully, you would see that the seeds are lined up in rows, curving out from the center of the flower. There are 55 shorter rows than the curve one, and then they curve one way. And then there are 34 longer rows that curve the other way. Isn't that a perfect way to arrange those seats? Okay, I wish you could see it. So share this, pass this along. You can see the curves. Mm -hmm. Can you see the curves? Now they've been arranged in a nice and wonderful way. And they can all fit. Thank you. You're welcome. And then says, isn't that the perfect way to arrange those seeds? They are arranged in a very orderly way, and all the seeds in those two sets of curved rows are close together so that there's no space that has been wasted. How pretty does the sunflower look because of every part of it is carefully arranged? God likes things to be orderly. That's why he has made the sunflowers the way he did, and he likes his people to be orderly too. That's why he gave the Israelites very specific role, rules about how to organize their camp. Could you do a better job in keeping your books or clothes or toys in an orderly way? <coughs> yes? Yeah, I done that. You can do a better job or you've done it the, 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 the 
best job you can. You've done the best, but we can keep improving. We can keep doing everything. If you already put the books that you have now in an orderly way, what would you do to all your new books? You would put them away in an orderly way. So God's like God likes us to be very orderly in the way we do and how we do things. And as we said before, from First Corinthians fourteen verse forty, let all things be done decently and in order. So, as God's children, we will do things decently and in order, right? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right, who would like to pray for us? Azizu, could you pray for us, please? Okay. Amen. Amen. Just love the little children, all the children of the world. Let the righteous child be our precious Jesus. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Sister, you help us? Sister, you help us? Building up the temple of the Lord. Sisters, won't you help us? Sisters, won't you help us? Building up the temple of the Lord. Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Church. Good morning. Scripture reading of today comes out of Revelation 13. So I'll give you just a bit of time to scroll to Revelation 13. We're going to read verses 1 to verses 9. Okay, I'm going to read out the New King James Version. And I stood upon the side of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of these heads as if it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty-two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred, and tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Up until so far. Amen.
where possible without us kneel, consume a posture of reverence for the Apostle of Christ. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you this Sabbath afternoon, giving you thanks and praise, Lord that you have brought us safely through another week to be able to gather here together. Lord, some have been through joyous a joyous time this week. Some have been through some serious trials. All of us have had our challenges, Lord, yet you have, in your grace, you have brought us through. Lord, we just pray that you would be with our hearts and our minds, Lord, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, any distraction which may pull our attention away from that which we, you would bless us with today, from the admonition we would receive, from the encouragement that you would give us, Lord. Help us to be able to be ready to receive these things. In a special way, we put before you those who are unwell at this time, those of our congregation and, and elsewhere, Lord, um, those who are unable to even make it here today for one reason or the other. Lord, we pray you will be with each one in a very special way. Even those like Sister Christine who have traveled to different destinations. Please be with them. Lord, as we prepare our hearts to hear this word from you now, I pray you will be with your manservant as he attempts to speak that which you have given to him, Lord. I pray that he himself will not be seen, but that Christ Jesus will be lifted up. We know, Lord, that there are many things that you have to say to us which are not always pleasing to our ears. Nevertheless, Lord, help us to be able to receive your admonition because we know that as a loving Father, Lord, you chasten as many as it is that you love. So once again, be with your man's servant, Lord. Remove any stammering from his lips. Remove any anxiety he may have. And let him speak boldly the words of life for you. In the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Hear our prayer, O Lord, incline thine ear to us, and grant us thy Thank you. 
So as, um, this is, as you can see, we're carrying on from the last time, the last time that we're here, the watchman's call. I press my step button. <laughs> the watchman's call, we're carrying on the theme. And every time I come before you, I will be on the same topic, the watchman's call. Because we're all called to be watchmen for one another and to the world. And our recap scripture is O thou son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the words of my mouth and warn them for me. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know and be established. Thank <laughs> you. 
For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto thyself and to all the flock to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves come into into among you, and sparing not the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. It is the rejection of Bible truth which makes men approach to infidelity. It is a backsliding church that lessens its distance between itself and the papers. It's taken from Signs of the Time, February 19, 1894. Does anybody know this brother or have heard of him recently? His name is up there. You can see. <laughs> yeah, mentioned last week. Last week he was mentioned. Last week, as I as um, we watched the video, I actually asked you to listen to the video. I don't know if anybody actually listened to it and saw what was taking place. Yeah, um, but Rainer Bruseman. Um, has been a Seventh-day Adventist conference president for the Netherlands and for Belgium, a general conference administrator, a pastor, and an author, among several other things. And in what he loosely calls retirement, he so he's retired at this moment um, in time, he continues to write, speak to Adventists and um, laity con and con at conference level and attend meetings around the world. So he's still quite active, although he is supposed to be retired. Now, we're going to listen to what um, the brother has to say about um, Yes, we'll, we'll do it for a little bit from the camera, but um, obviously we're having issues here, so I'm not sure if you can hear it today. Thank 
technology. Alright, so the irony is, the irony is, throughout this entire series, I've been having issues that I've never had with any, any of the technical things at all that we've been doing. So, in any case, um, basically, um, He's at a conference that was cancelled last week, last week's Sabbath, which was at Loma Linda University. It was cancelled um, from Loma Linda, um, but however, they had the event at another venue on the same day. So while there was um, jubilation saying that this was cancelled, the topic was called um, Adventists, um, what Adventists could learn from Roman Catholics, or something to that effect. And what they can learn from each other. Um, so, in saying that, what has happened, what has transpired, he's basically gone on to say that we should um, throw out the great controversy, so to speak. That's, that's what he's saying. Now, to my understanding from what I've read in the Great Controversy, the Great Controversy is a history, and it does speak some serious common truths about certain things and obviously <coughs> the history of the Catholic Church and its, um, its doctrines and so forth. But in the very last part of the slide, he says we ought to distance ourselves from the teaching that is um, from Sister White. Now, See if I can find the actual slide um, that he's speaking about, the actual words that he used. Okay, we'll come up on it. We'll come up on it. Right, so are we to get rid of the great controversy? My answer to that is no. I don't know who agrees with me or disagrees with me, but my answer to that is no. It's either um, Sister White is a prophet or she's not a prophet. Mm. It's as simple as that. Now, in recent times we've heard a lot of accusations that she's a false prophet, um, that we are a cult as a Seventh-day Adventist movement because we have different sort of um, beliefs in obviously a lot of faiths out there and a lot of the denominations. So we are seen as a cult, a cult movement. Last week, um, Brother Dunin Giop, after returning from such a long time of illness, um, a severe heart attack as, as was reported, he doubled down on his um, teachings as before. And he has said the same things, literally. Um, you know, Basically, what this man is saying, he said more or less the same sort of things. But let's, let's hear what the prophet has to say. Men will stand in our pulpits with the torch of false prophecy in, the, in their hands. Sorry. So I'll read that again. Many will stand in our pulpits with the torch of false prophecy in their hands, kindled from the hellish torch of Satan. If doubt and unbelief is cherished, the faithful ministers, the faithful ministers will, will be removed from the people who think they know much, uh, know so much. Now, this in itself is it was a self-fulfilling prophecy for um, Brother Guillaume. He was removed from the people, and he's been given a second chance, but he still come back with the same vein of thinking and teaching. God will not be mocked. Unsanctified ministers are arraying themselves against God. They are praising Christ and the God of this world in the same breath. Let the son of deceit and false witness be entertained by a church that has great light, great evidence, and that church will discard the message of the Lord. And receive the most unreasonable assertions and false superstitions, false theories, suppositions, and um, uh, false theories. 
Satan laughs at their folly, for he knows what the truth is. So, while some of these men are up there teaching these things, Satan is laughing at us. Satan is laughing at us as a movement and as a church. And for those of us who believe these men, sadly, he's laughing at us also. The times have changed. These, these words strengthen their unbelief. Thus, peace and safety is cried from men who would never flip-flop their voice like the trumpets to show, sorry, men who will never lift up their voice to show, like the trumpet, to show God's people their transgressions and how to take their sins. These dumb dogs that would not bark are the ones who feel the just vengeance of an offended God. That is a strong message that is given there. Sadly, many of, the, of our ministers, many of our laity, many of the people in our church have become dumb dogs. They refuse to speak and speak the truth according to the word of God. And there is a time that is now that we cannot do that as a people who have the last message of mercy. God is either teaching his church Reproving their wrong and strengthening their faith, or he's not. This work of God, this is of God. This work is of God, or it is not. God does nothing in part in partnership with Satan. My work, Sister White, bears the stamp of God, the stamp of or the stamp of the enemy. So which is it? Does it bear the stamp of God or the stamp of the enemy? Mm -hmm. There is no halfway work in the matter. The testimonies of the Spirit of God or testimonies are of the Spirit of God or of the devil. Mm -hmm. Strong words. Mm -hmm. Strong words. And you know, she's not trying to take herself out of it. She's saying it's either it's the word of God or not. And as we know, there are two camps the Bible speaks about in the last days. The rich and the poor, the free and the bond, the, um, those who have the mark and those who do not have the mark. There are two camps in that respect. At this time, we are so near the end. Shall men sell our particular characteristics as God's chosen people for advantage that the world has give has to give shall shall the fervor of those who transgress the Lord God be looked upon as a great value shall those whom the Lord has named his people suppose that their is any power higher than the great I am? Shall we endeavor to blot out the distinguishing points of faith that have made us Seventh-day Adventists? These are some serious questions. And I think that last one is, is the most important. Shall we endeavor to blot out the distinguishing points of our faith that has made us Seventh-day Adventists? I don't know if this next video will play. Have we connected the Bluetooth? It's going to be perfect if the microphone is working today. But this is a recording of Elder Wilson about five or six years ago. And the question was asked. Uh, is the question uh, has surfaced from time to time as to whether or not uh, there is some connection between the General Conference 
and uh, its involvement with Sunday laws and that kind of thing. Also, strange rumors that have been floating around in the internet for a number of years, actually, that uh, the Pope has contacted the United States President, who has contacted the General Conference President about national Sunday laws and all of this. I want to tell you that this is absolutely incorrect, totally false. Somebody, somewhere, imagines certain things and puts it on the internet, and then people believe what they read. Understand that, yes, national Sunday laws will come, persecution will come, but nothing of that sort is in the pipeline at the present time, nothing that we have understood. But nothing of that sort is in the pipeline at the present time, nothing that we have understood. So, as we're being told, there's no Sunday law in the pipeline. And this was recorded, um, I can't remember the conference, but it was recorded. Uh, the question about, has. Uh, about five, six years ago. And then later on, he was asked uh, the same question, and then he sort of like backed down on what he'd said. But um, <laughs> when he realized the person was recorded, he asked them that they accepted them to erase the, the recording. But well, we're moving on. Next slide. Next slide. When the church shall enforce the decrees and sustain the institutions of the, the sorry, when when the state shall enforce the decrees and and sustain the institutions of the church, then will process of America have formed an image to the papacy. Then the church, and then the true church, sorry, will be assailed by persecution, as were God's people in the ancient times. Almost every century furnished the instances of what human hearts controlled by rage and malice can do under the plea of serving. By protecting the rights of the church and the state. In America right now, there's a big call for um, the return of the church and state movement. Basically, um, we'll actually we'll cover that next in the next slide. Yeah. And you know, just for church and state to reunite, and for those of the Protestant movement to have more power in the government and so forth. I'm sure many of you have heard of 2020, the 2025 um, project, um, of which is one of my sermons, previous sermons. The Protestant churches have followed in the steps of Rome by forming alliances with worldly powers, have manifested a similar desire to restrict liberties of conscience. There was a there was a recent um, conviction of a man in the UK who was basically criminally convicted for silently praying for his dead son. This is you can actually see this on the news, and um, it's it's just shocking. So now. We can be held criminally responsible for um, thought crimes. In the Great Controversy, it speaks about what's the chapter? Chapter thirty-five is it? Liberty of conscience threatens. So now, just thinking, going outside, like for instance, I know that there was this lady; she was um, arrested also for going outside abortion clinics and praying. And she, I don't think she was convicted the last no. time, but she's another one that was, you know, arrested for a thought crime. She wasn't praying loud or anything like that. She was praying in her mind. How many nonconformist ministers have suffered under the power of the Church of England? Persecution <laughs> always follows a restriction liberty on the part of the secular governments. Project 2025. 
Congress should encourage communal rest by amending the first Labour Standard Act of FLSA 9 to require that workers pay time and half for work for hours worked on the Sabbath. What Sabbath is this? Is this the Sabbath today Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath? Sunday. Or is this a Sunday? <laughs> that would default to Sunday. Except the employer, with a sincere religious observation of the Sabbath at different times, e.g. Friday sundown to, to Saturday sundown, the obligations would transfer to that period instead. Now that's what this says. But when the leader of um, the 2025 20, project was asked about that, about people of other religions like Jews and so forth, seven day Adventists who keep the Sabbath, he said, they're not basically going to pander to any religion. Sunday is going to be the day. And that's the day that he pushes. Four stages of the Sunday law. Refrain from work on Sunday, honor Sunday, but still keep worship on Sabbath. Cannot worship on Sabbath, only Sunday, fines and imprisonment, death penalty for those who worship Sabbath and disregard Sunday. And these are scriptural references and also references of the great controversy up there. <coughs> this image is one that is obviously, um, I don't want to say the word concocted. It's one that's obviously come out of the mind of someone in regards to the image of the beast, which is um, in Revelation. And it's a composite beast. You can see you have the body of the leopard, you have the head of a lion and so forth, and you have the dragon in the background. And, you know, these are uh, this is the beast coming up out of the sea. And in Revelation 13, that, that um, beast is explained what, what it is and so forth. So we read that earlier. And um, it's an interesting composite. But when you look at it in the scriptural references, you see what it's talking about. Popery is just what declared, that just what um, prophecy declares that she would be apostasy of the latter times. And there's, there's a scripture reference of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. This is the... Yes, this is the last... Um, the words of um, the grant of Weiner, that they are not a company that can't pronounce it. But this is the last... Bruce, that's it. This was the last um, thing that he said before he said we ought to distance ourselves from this characteristics. This is what he said, and he quoted, "It is a part. It is in. It is a part of her policy to assume the character which will best accomplish her purpose. But beneath the variable appearance of the chameleon, she conceals the invariable venom of the serpent. We." Are not bound to keep to yet. Don't yet. We are not bound to keep faith promises to the rights. She declares. So that bit where it speaks about the invariable um, venom of the serpent is where he said we ought to distance ourselves from this character, from this characteristic of the church, and thinking in that way. Shall this power, whose record a thousand years is written in blood of saints, now be acknowledged as part of the Church of Christ? That's the question asked. Here is the mind that has wisdom. The seven heads of the seven mountains of which the woman sits. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city which mm -hmm. reigns from the kings of the earth. This is taken from 17, Revelation 17, verses 9 and 
the other 80s, um, 19 and 17. 19 and 18, sorry. So, this is the woman that sits in that great city. What is that great city? That great city sits on seven hills. If you actually go and look that up, you'll find that the Vatican's church sits on seven hills. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones, having a golden cup in her hand, of abomination, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. Revelation chapter 14, to Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. And here is the mind that has wisdom, the seven heads and the seven mantles on which the woman sits. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kingdom of death. Do all men who rule our countries seem to answer to the Pope? Seem to have to have an audience with the Pope? Do they? They certainly do. Whether it's your Google, whether it's your Microsoft, whether it's your presidents, whether it's your prime ministers, your kings, even the Arabs and so forth, they all have a, a, um, an audience with the Pope. Why? That's the question. Why? Because he's seen as the world's great moral leader. But as we are told to throw the great controversy out of the window, or as Neil Wilson put it in the um, trash heap of history, and the things that are written in the controversy is telling us, helping us to understand the times that we live in and pointing us to the fulfilling of the coming Sunday law. Sadly, many of our leaders are, as, as, as the Bible calls, blind leader of the blind. As we saw the image, as we see the image there, and spoke about things that she has done in the past. The question is asked in Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or can the letter change his spots? Then may he also do good, that is also accustomed to do evil. This is taken from the Ladasso C um, encyclical. 2015, which was signed that very year, 2015, we were, as Protestants, I remember we were in Stanbrook, and we were celebrating what was supposed to be the 500th year, the anniversary of Protestantism. But yet, a few months later, which was obviously spoken about, and um, I don't know if you guys remember Tony Martin, who was a um, Catholic priest who had been in Kenneth Copeland's church and was talking about um, coming back to the church. And he said that jokingly to everyone, we're all Catholics now. And people were laughing. The same thing was happening to our church. We were there celebrating the 500 years of um, Protestant Reformation. But yet, the Lutheran church was due to sign that they're no longer um, upholding the protest. Martin Luther had started the protest in, 50, is it um, 1758, 17? No, I remember the word, I can't remember the 15, 17. 17, so is it? 1517, thank you very much. And he has started the protest, but yet, on the 500th year anniversary, it was actually going to be signed away by the church. And we were being there celebrating, and the pastor that came there was basically just giving jokes. And it was really heartbreaking. 
This is point two three seven of the Lakato Soup in Singapore. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with others, and with ourselves and with others and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection of the dead, the first day of the new creation. Who First fruits are, are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. It, Sunday that is, also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. The law of the weekly rest obeyed work on the seventh day. So when we look at this, we have to really look at this carefully. But it says on Sunday here, then it says Sunday like the Jewish Sabbath. Now, this in itself is saying that Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath, seventh day as we know it, is for the Jews. And it says it's meant to heal our relationship with, um, with ourselves and with God. Then it says Sunday is the day of the resurrection, which is correct, the first day of the new creation. It is the first day of the week of creation, whose fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, and the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest to God. Has God given us a day of rest? Yes. yes. What is the purpose of the day of rest? Apart from obviously resting in God communion. What is that the purpose of that day of rest? It's to honor God. It's to honor him as our creator, it's to honor him as our Saviour, to honor him as us um, the person that makes us holy. That's right. And why was that day created? Okay, I'll, I'll ask this question. How many of you have birthdays in here? Every single one of us, right? Every single one of us. Should I change your birthday now? No. Why not? Can't change it. Why can't we change it? It's the original. If you change it, it becomes fake. It becomes fake. Yeah. So, okay. I was born. No, I'm not going to tell you that because you're going to start thinking I'm trying to do my promotion for birthdays. But well, <laughs> I was born a few years back. Twenty-five plus interest, I would say. But um. <laughs> You know, my birthday is coming up soon. Should I now say, change my birthday from the day it's going to fall to another day and say, like, okay, tomorrow's my birthday? Why not? Because tomorrow will be my birthday. It will be. It will be my birthday. <laughs> the, same yeah, principle applies say to, the same principle applies to the first day of the week. It will always be the first day of the week. However, as for the youth, they are being educated, to, and even many of us um, yeah, yeah. subliminally are being educated to say, when you look at calendars, like for instance, you look at your phone, anybody get their phone out now and look at the calendar, and I guarantee you, Sunday is in the seventh day position. Look at the calendar on your phone, you'll see that. But when we were children, we were taught, the first day of the week is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, and there was even a song for it. Yes, brother. I think that is the, the biggest issue. I mean, so people might say, well, you know, if the churches align themselves with the Roman Catholic Church, that doesn't make that the people's faith change. The, the issue is that that movement brings in new, uh, um, uh, um, new thought patterns, new education, and all the people will follow, go through. This is not written, th this alignment is not for the current generation that might have a faith in a certain way. The future children will have this completely different education. We've seen it in schools. Mm -hmm. we, we, the evolution theory has started being, being taught and we're not allowed to pray for, for God anymore. Mm -hmm. the, the current people that were there might not be affected uh, in the first generation. Second, third generation are completely different. Mm -hmm. and that is the, the when, it, when, when you look yes. at these movements, we need to think of generational. Correct. 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 Yeah. We'll go back to this image. This image 
When you, um, I think it's the leopard that represents Greece, right? Mm -hmm. The leopard. Mm -hmm. Why does the leopard represent the body of the, 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 the beast? Does anybody know? What was Greece? Okay. See, how did Greece conquer? Did Greece conquer by force? No. Greece conquered by education. And this is what is a, making up a big part of the church also, education. And as you said, Brother Dion, they're educating for the future. So the youth not knowing any differently, unless they have parents who will teach them differently, or pe people who will teach them differently, they are just going along with what's being educated, what's being fed them. And that's the problem that they face, because they will not understand that these things are not so, which is being told them. Right, and as we sit about the, we're talking about the Sunday law, this is right on our doorstep. We can read the headlines, right? Tesco's urge to keep Sunday special. The island of Lewis up in Scotland. The irony of this is, whereas we, like tomorrow, we have what's called the Sunday trading rules, right? Starting from 10 till 4. Scotland. Scotland doesn't have it. <laughs> I found that out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I went to Scotland and I was thinking, oh, what time does the shops close this and the other? I see the shops closing at six. I'm thinking, how come they close at six? I went to Scotland to find out they do not have the same trading laws as England does. So they can trade the same as any other day of the week. Which was really interesting. I only live a couple of hours from, from there by train, so if I need to go out on a Sunday to shop until 6 o'clock, I'll go. But the point of the matter is, this is in Scotland, the island of Lewis. Mm. And the people there says, says more than 1,500 people have signed a petition to urge Tesco's on the island of Lewis to keep Sundays special. The Tesco's stone away store, its only UK branch on the remainder of to, if so, it's only UK branch in Stoneway is to remain closed on Sundays. Mm -hmm. But it is consulting staff about opening seven days a week. Mm. So it's, if, like me and yourselves, I hope, if you don't get your shopping in by Friday afternoon, you better pray that it's the winter time so you can get your shopping in Saturday evening. Because I don't know what time the shop closes there. And if it's summertime, you better make sure that you do your due diligence and get your shopping in if you are living on that, uh, on that island. The sin of emissions. This is um, the climate change command 10 plus 1. Keep the Sabbath a global, weekly, non carbon day rest could reduce emissions of the world by, by a seventh and be observed by different faith communities on different days. This is saying on different days, but the truth is this is coming in by the climate change and it's coming in stealthily because most people are, uh, they do care about the environment. We do care about the environment. We want to keep it clean and so So that's the reason, that's the common denominator between the Christian and the non-Christian, the Muslim and the Hindu, the Hindu and the um, Jainists or whatever they are, and the Buddhists or whatever. That's the common denominator. Innovation is another one. It's in our mission. You shall innovate. Technology can accelerate decarbonization. Collaborate can accelerate implementation. 666. Does anybody know this church? This is like so a what European. Was the reference? What was the reference to 666? I understand. The 666 reference is basically just showing you how, you know, this is man working. Man working to do his own his own due diligence to 
save the world and not not um, not God. We have also this um, the European Sunday Alliance. Now there are some videos. These are all politicians that were talking about um, Sunday and so forth. I didn't want to add more vigor because of the time, obviously. But um, talking about the European Sunday Alliance, I don't know if you can actually get this online, but if I can get it, I will put it in the, the chat so you can have a look at it, where they're all talking about the sacredness of Sunday. Every single one of these politicians talking about the sacredness of Sunday. So this in itself is now again, you know, educating the minds to say Sunday is a day, is a sacred day. Now, whoever wants to charge to, to, to um, hold up whole Sunday, that's up to them, that's fine. But why should it be forced on those who do not accept Sunday as a day? The sacred day of rest, or, or anything else. Mm. I think we had this slide already. We had this slide already, not too long ago. Right. As the people of God approach the final crisis, they must, with increasing power, proclaim the message He has given. The warning must be given to the churches. God's requirements must be laid before those who transgression the laws, his laws. They must be made to understand that this is a life and death question. God's remnant people are to fill the earth with the cry of the third angel's message. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they which keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. These are they who are, are repairing the breach in the law of God. In, in the face of the bitter opposition, they take their stand under the banner of Prince Emmanuel, proclaiming bravely and fearlessly the message he has given. Brothers and sisters, as I've shown in the last few slides, though we were told by our own dear um, GC president that there is no Sunday law in the pipeline. And many of our so-called um see this this, this the, the Jerusalem guy, he's obviously up there, he's a GC, um, um he was a conference president and so forth, he's telling us to discard the the, 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 the GC, the, the great controversy. You can see that we are really in perilous times. We need to really study and show ourselves a proof and understand the time that we live to ourselves. The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth, especially controversial. What does the word controversial mean? Can anybody give me a synonym to controversial? Disputed or argued about? Disputed, debated, counteracted, contradicted, contested, challenged. It is the point especially challenged. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, the line, then the lines of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve him not. While the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God. Keeping the true Sabbath in obedience to God, to the law, to God's law, is an evidence of loyalty to the Creator. While one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast, the others, choosing the token of allegiance to the divine authority, receives the seal of God. Now, I must make this clear. No one at this point in time who keeps Sunday as a sacred day has the mark of the beast. Because it has not been brought into legislation, all will be given the chance to choose. And many who sit here today under the hearing of my voice, by the grace of God, I pray that we will not be those who will transfer to take the mark of the beast because of convenience. But many who may hear this sermon and sermons like this will sadly be 
those who transfer to take the mark of the beast because of convenience. They know the truth, but because of um, the restrictions that will be placed on Seventh-day Adventists and people alike who keep the Sabbath, they will sadly be the ones that are marked because of works. In a special sense, and we're closing, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and black devils. To them has been entrusted the last warning of, to a perishing world, for a perishing world. On them is shining the wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given the work of the most solid thought. The proclamation of the first, second, third angel's messages. There is no other work of so great importance. There is no other work of so great importance. There is how many? No, no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing, else. not a thing, nada, zilch, to absorb their attention. <laughs> and some words of encouragement. For Zion's sake, I will hold my peace. I will not hold my peace. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. I'm, I'm testing whether you see you guys still awake. <laughs> we're awake, we're awake, we're awake. For Zion's yeah. sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteous thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that is, that is burning. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called. A new, a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Amen. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. Wouldn't you like to be a crown of glory in the hand Amen. of the Lord? Amen. And a world diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called as Bethlehem, and thy name Beulah. Mm. For the Lord delights in thee, and thy land shall be married. Mm. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so shall God, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I must pause at this point and say, I remember when my fair bride was coming down the aisle and my back was turned first and I turned to meet her. And I saw how beautiful she was. Man, that was a day of my life. You know, that was a day of my life. And it's like, you know, even for the first few years to actually call her my wife, it was such. It was such a. It was such a strange thing to me, you know. Because I don't know. I don't know. Come, come on, you married men in here, please, please. Somebody back me up. Back me up. Somebody. How did that day when you turned to saw your, see your wife as she's coming down the aisle to you? How did it make you feel? I was. I went to praise the Lord, you know, and. This is what the Lord is saying to us. When he sees his bride coming to him, he will rejoice over us. You know? So let us be the true bride of the Christ. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto thee of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward with thee. And his words follow his word before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called. Sort out a city not for sale. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us endeavor, please, to be the bride of the Lord, that he can rejoice in us. Let us not be forsaken. This word I need.
Let us pray. So Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for your loving kindness and mercy. I pray that the message that was given, though it was a hard one, Lord, even to deliver for myself, and though we had problems with the technology, Lord, Lord, that this message will not be um, taken lightly, and it will not be, it will not go out unheeded. Let not your word return unto you void of the way. Be of us now as we um, listen to the closing hymn, and Lord, I pray that you will be with us and bless us, Lord, as we think about, <coughs> and about this, this, the, the words that have been said. These things I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Shall we stand for the closing hymn, please? Two nine four. Two nine four. Two nine Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you only from the victory? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, unworthy power in the blood. separate themselves essentially having not the spirit but beloved build up yourselves on the most holy faith pray in the Holy Ghost keeping yourselves in the love of God looking for mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and eternal life and of some have compassion making a difference and others Save the fair, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep us falling, and to present us faultless 
the full presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.